The Kyrgyz whose ancestors came to what is now the territory of Kyrgyzstan in the 1600s brought with them many of the pre-Islamic practices and beliefs. Many Kyrgyz today find their pre-Islamic traditional practices to be compatible and even in consonance with their Islamic beliefs. Archa is burned early in the morning at bazaars before business starts. It may also be performed in order to cure illness or to protect against evil spirits that many Kyrgyz believe are the purveyors of disease. Other Kyrgyz may also burn archa for less traditional reasons, because it smells nice or because of its antibiotic properties. While the Kyrgyz make up roughly 70% of the population of Kyrgyzstan, it is also home to a plethora of different ethnicities. While many Kyrgyz practice traditional beliefs, roughly 90% of all Kyrgyzstanis practice Islam. While Central Asia may be surrounded by areas destabilized by Islamic fundamentalists, Kyrgyzstan, along with the rest of Central Asia, has been largely free of Islamic militancy since the fall of the Soviet Union, and has a secular government that guarantees the freedom of religion for all of its citizens. Most Central Asians, along with the Kyrgyz, adhere to the Sunni Hanafi school of Islamic jurisprudential thought that is renowned for its tolerance of local traditions. Historically, elements of Hanafi thought have allowed for the consumption of certain traditional substances, such as kumis, that while containing negligible traces of alcohol, are regularly consumed by Central Asians. Other than Islam, Kyrgyzstan is home to a plethora of other religious movements. Orthodoxy is Kyrgyzstan's second largest traditionally practiced religion and is practiced by Kyrgyzstan's minority Russian population, whose ancestors came to the territory of Kyrgyzstan starting in the 1850s. While in the first years of independence, Russians made up some 30% of the population, 24 years after independence, Russians only make up roughly 10% of the population and mostly live in Kyrgyzstan's Chui and Issyllkul regions. Various Protestant sects of various stripes have also gained footing in Kyrgyzstan and Central Asia after the fall of the Soviet Union. Unlike the Orthodox, Protestant churches have actively proselytized, gaining not only Russian but formerly Muslim converts as well. Kyrgyzstan is renowned for its local Central Asian cuisine. On many streets of Kyrgyzstan today, traditional apioshkas can be seen being baked and many locals are proud of the quality and flavor of many of their local foods, such as shashlik, manti, lagman, and beshbarmak. Dordoi, purported to be Central Asia's largest bazaar, is a commercial artery that provides thousands of jobs and supplies Kyrgyzstanis with goods from China, Russia, South Asia, and elsewhere. While many Kyrgyzstanis are positive about the perceived benefits of being part of the newly joined Eurasian Union, others are less enthusiastic since its custom regime may make it more difficult to import cheap products from China that Kyrgyzstan is reliant on. While many Kyrgyzstanis are fond of their nomadic heritage and national traditions such as Kokboru, a sports game in where riders on horses compete for a decapitated goat carcass. The forces of globalism and capitalism have also played a role in introducing Kyrgyzstan to new forms of entertainment, such as motor racing. After the fall of the Soviet Union, Kyrgyzstan has experienced increased economic inequality. With independence, many illegal Novostroikas, or new settlements, have sprung up all over Kyrgyzstan's capital Bishkek, and are often made with subpar building materials and lack sufficient water and transportation infrastructure that more developed areas of Bishkek have. Economically, Kyrgyzstan is the second poorest of the five newly independent ex-Soviet states to emerge from the Soviet Union. Not all, however, have suffered economically, and Kyrgyzstan has a substantial middle class and is also home to the select few who have made their fortune in Kyrgyzstan's post-Soviet era. Despite gaining independence, many Kyrgyzstanis recognize and remember the Soviet Union's legacy in Kyrgyzstan and express nostalgia for its free educational, medical, and social support programs amidst what many see as a more corrupt and less economically equal post-independence era. 
Many Kyrgyzstanis are proud of the role that their country played while a part of the Soviet Union in the war against fascism 70 years ago. While communism is dead, it still has left its legacy in the minds of old and young alike. While many Western pundits say that Kyrgyzstani military integration with other ex-Soviet states and Russia and CSTO is the result of Russia trying to unilaterally regain its former status as a global superpower. A majority of Kyrgyzstanis have positive feelings towards Russia and many positively view movements towards integration with Russia and other ex-Soviet states. Since independence, Kyrgyzstan remains a terra incognita for many Westerners. Many Kyrgyz do not find anything contradictory with performing one's traditional pre-Islamic practices, being Muslim, having nostalgia for the Soviet Union, and participating as consumers in the modern world of capitalism. Kyrgyzstan still is a multi-ethnic republic that is divided along the lines of ethnicity, religion, and politics, and Kyrgyzstanis cannot collectively agree on the national identity that Kyrgyzstan should have. While many in Kyrgyzstan would like an inclusive form of civil nationalism that emphasizes Kyrgyzstan's ethnic diversity, others are pushing for increased recognition of Kyrgyzstan's ethnic Kyrgyz majority. Nonetheless, Kyrgyzstan, as a state situated in the heart of Central Asia, serves as a melting pot of diverse cultures that balances finely between the East and West, the, the traditional and the modern, and as the Silk Road did centuries prior, serves as a platform of exchange for different ideas, cultures, and civilizations.